Check this out guys, get ready. It's coming. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, there it is. Oh yeah, let's let's just watch that again, okay? The sniper and then the tank and then boom, that's what we wanted to see. So Battlefield have just released an excellent four minute video showing us all of the maps in the game at launch, plus the first additional map in Tides of War. Now there's a ton of new gameplay in this video and of course a look at all of the six other maps that we haven't really seen at all yet. Alongside this was a blog detailing everything about these maps, how they generally play, the size, the tempo, game modes available and what exactly is at each point of the map. Really surprising to get this level of detail before release but here it is nonetheless. So I'm going to show you all of that new footage now as we go through all of the eight maps and walk through the highlights. We're starting off here with the two North African maps, Hamada and Aerodrome. Hamada, as we can see in the trailer, is a massive, sprawling map. Seven flags in conquest, one of the largest maps in the history of the Battlefield franchise, they say. And this looks like a solid, classic 64-player Battlefield map with land, air and infantry. And a ton of distance between the flags, infantry will need to focus on what scant cover they can find on the low elevations and head to the high ground to really make a difference. And speaking of heights, the flyable play space on this map is immense which will make it perfect for both intense dogfights and strafing runs. And we get to see some of the new HUD icons here too and that massive bridge in the back there perhaps we'll be able to destroy that or at least part of it it does look like there's a support player constructed bridge on the end there. Interestingly in Conquest if you capture the G flag then your team gets access to an airstrip and an extra plane spawn that you can take off with. Very cool. Grand operations on this map will start with an airborne attack and then move on to Conquest Assault. Aerodrome, the next map we're taking a look at and this is based on the British attacks on German installations, supply lines and airfields in the Libyan desert in 1942 to 1943. Six flags on conquest, in the centre of the map is this massive hangar and that's a key strategic point that can be heavily fortified and defended and this will be a nest for infantry clashes but daring tankers can also try their luck in there in what will be a severely contested area. And this is a medium sized map with tanks and infantry only, no aircraft on this one so heavily focused on ground combat with a ton of defensive fortification options apparently. The sea flag looks absolutely mad and as we see in the trailer options to blow up the planes inside and cause big damage. Cheeky shot of the universal carrier there too, looks like a three person vehicle with a mounted LMG, the meme wagon I'll call it. Grand operations on this map will be breakthrough and final stand if day 4 is reached. Next up, Twisted Steel, set in France, seven flags in conquest. This is the map that we saw in the Cursed Reveal trailer. In reality, it looks like a pretty sweet map, home to apparently the biggest structure ever created in a Battlefield game. And that's the giant bridge that spans the entire length of the map and has a capture point on and above it. Climb the ladders situated on its pillars or fight on the actual pillars themselves secured by your newly built fortifications. The giant bridge on Twisted Steel's B flag is something that you could easily spend an entire round on due to its dynamic nature. So owning this flag will give you sniper positions which overlook the rest of the map. And it's got strong fortifications in both directions, effectively making it a big roadblock in the middle of the bridge. So team play and maintaining fortifications are critical for holding this particular flag against enemy attacks. It seems like a pretty sweet map, lots of back and forth tank battles I think too with the roaming hills and using them as cover and peeking to take shots in and out. And in grand operations you'll play airborne and breakthrough. It's just a gorgeous looking map really and I love this aerial shot. I noticed too that on the UI here the tank driver can see the direction the gunner is pointing and that could be very useful. Moving on, Arras, again in France, medium to large map, infantry, tanks and planes and six flags in conquest and this is where we get to see that beautiful saving private Ryan moment with the tank and the sniper tower. Yes please, shades of harvest day from bad company here I feel. 
open areas where tanks and planes will prefer to fight, but also hectic infantry friendly zones like in the center of the map, where snipers can take advantage of the bird's eye view made possible by the church, which is the map's highest vantage point. And this is cool, in the big open fields you can build trenches, which will make a much wiser way to get around than exposing yourself in the middle of a field like a sitting duck. And on top of creating those new routes, you can also block routes for the enemy too with fortifications. Grand operations here will be front lines followed by final stand if it gets to day four. But get this, it did say that the play area usually moves towards one of the city areas, implying that the play zone is random or has several predetermined locations that it can move to and shrink just like in Battle Royale. The colours on this map though are stunning and the layout kind of reminds me of a map from Squad or a Milsim type game. Really looking forward to this one. And next, Devastation. This is a destroyed version of Rotterdam but in a completely different location to the Rotterdam map already in the game. So it's a completely new map with new areas to fight over. It's just also set in Rotterdam but after it's been destroyed. And we've got five flags, medium sized map with a fast tempo, infantry and tanks only. And this map was developed by Matt Wagner who created Fort Vo in BF1. So I expect this to be an excellent infantry focused fan favorite map. And this feels very World War II to me. There will be a ton of fighting over the cathedral in the middle, the ruined buildings. It looks like a manic map. And obviously with the toned down explosive spam in BF5, this could be something really special for infantry fans. And it will have front lines in Grand Operations and then final stand on day four. I think final stand on this map could be great. And finally, the last launch map that we haven't really seen before is Fjell 652. And this is set in Norway up in the snowy mountains, fighting amongst the clouds. Infantry and air only, interestingly enough. And that's a new dynamic for Battlefield. And it's a small map with a very fast pace and only five flags for conquest. I imagine there's going to be a lot of shooting down planes in this map with the Panzerfaust. And this map has a lot in common, they say, with the Battlefield 1 map Argon Forest. However, it isn't as linear as that, so it's less a funnel than an open air warren of complicated narrow passages and rocky barriers. Lots of different levels of elevation here and flanking routes. Another difference, of course, between the two is the addition of aircraft. Planes can dart in and out and around the peaks, dogfighting or strafing enemy positions, control the summit and force the enemy pilots to prove their skill in the gorges below. And if you get to day four and final stand of this operation, you'll be fighting in a snowstorm. That's going to be nasty. Now, in the video, of course, it covers the two other launch maps, Rotterdam and Narvik, but you know, we've seen and played those maps in the alpha and the beta quite a lot. And they don't look that much different in these clips here, except the visibility looks like it's been massively improved. Matt Wagner posted this clip on Twitter and it looks pretty good now. But of course, we do get some beautiful LMG gunishment going on in the shots here too. And then we got a short look at Panzerstorm set in Belgium. And this will be the first map coming out in the Tides of War Chapter 1 and that's after the launch of the game, maybe in December, I would guess. Plenty of tanks in a massive battle. Great big map again, seven flags and no air here by the looks of it either. It's giving me kind of armored fury vibes, but we'll see. And that's all. I have to say, this was a great video. Fantastic trailer. This game is starting to look and feel like a Battlefield game now. And seeing this trailer and the footage of the new maps has definitely got me hyped up for the game again. So there it is. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. Make sure you hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. In Battlefield 5, you'll fight through the unexplored settings of World War II with maps that will challenge your squad in epic multiplayer experiences. Amada is the largest of the Battlefield 5 maps available at launch. You'll engage in combat inspired by some of the biggest tank battles in human history and seek to control the steep canyons and narrow bridges of this desert map. Aerodrome is set in a ruined Axis airfield in the aftermath of a recent Allied bombardment. Its central hangar is where both infantry and vehicles will come together and is a key strategic point that can be heavily fortified and defended. A flooded marshland dominated by a monumental, partly destroyed steel bridge. Twisted Steel features the biggest structure ever created for a battlefield game and poses always evolving challenges for squads trying to defend or attack. Away from the bridge, 
tanks cut across the marshlands, and planes pose constant danger from the sky. In Arras, tanks roam the fields, while infantry look for cover in the extended trench lines and stalk the enemy through scattered woods. The small town center will be the most contested area, with the church providing sight lines of the entire map. Full-scale urban combat awaits you among the streets and canals of Rotterdam. Pilot tanks on the main roads hold the train tracks against incoming enemies and watch the windows of the tall Witte House building for enemy snipers. In devastation, you will need to adapt to a landscape of ruin in the aftermath of fighting in Rotterdam. On this tight, infantry-focused map, flush out enemies from the multi-story library and command the terrain around the destroyed medieval church. Inspired by the invasion of Narvik in 1940, on this map you'll fight for control of the harbor town. There are close encounters around the ruined residential buildings, but space opens up for your squad in the industrial area. Battle above the Arctic Circle in Fjell 652. Infantry and planes clash against each other on the top of this rugged peak, creating a combat dynamic new to battlefield. Seize key points like mountain cabins and AA guns in this majestic but hostile environment, complete with extreme dynamic weather. Coming post-launch in Tides of War Chapter 1, Panzerstorm is set in the Belgian countryside, inspired by the first major tank battle of the Second World War. A massive force of armor is creating a wave of destruction, and infantry will have to pick their moments to engage. These locations are just the beginning. After launch, we'll continue to evolve and expand the battlefield with new ways to play, taking all players on a journey across the immense scope of World War II. Battlefield will never be the same.